Now to the other side of this passionate debate, we're joined by Elizabeth Graham with Texas Right to Life, a group supporting this law. Thank you for coming on, Elizabeth. Let me start with what does today mean for you and the work you do? Thank you so much. Great to be with you all. This is a tremendous victory for Texas and for the country. The pro-life movement has worked for years to pr help pregnant women and to protect the unborn. So this is a tremendous victory and precedent setting for other states. So the effectiveness date, September 1st, of the Texas Heartbeat Act is a landmark giant step forward in the pro-life movement for the whole country. Critics say this is an unusual law in the way that it's constructed. We heard there from Planned Parenthood about this, what they call vigilante justice that encourages people to sue thy neighbor. So I have to ask you, are you at all worried that this could turn neighbor against neighbor? I'm not worried, and thanks for that question. What I think is important to remember is that pro-lifers and pro-life legislators have worked to enact public policy for years that encourage outreach to pregnant women and that protects the unborn. And what happens is these laws go to activist judges who devise judicial concoctions to say there's an undue burden or this conflicts with Roe. And so these laws meant to be protective are up are held up by the courts. And so Planned Parenthood, America's largest abortion provider, for profit, by the way, and other, the abortion industry, they're able to go to the courts. And so this new Texas heartbeat law, which is precedent setting and a landmark victory for the whole country, this new Texas law is written very strategically to keep the heartbeat law out of the talons of judicial activists. And so it was very strategically done. There are civil remedies and there are civil ways to enforce the law civilly. And it's a new strategy that we think will work. And abortion providers only need to be worried if they're committing crimes. And what is a crime now is that abortion after the child's heartbeat is detectable, that's now illegal in Texas. In Texas. And so if those providers are following the law, they don't need to be worried. And Elizabeth, we know the argument uh, made by you and other anti-abortion advocates uh, when it comes to the fetus and when the heartbeat is detected. Um, but many ask, what about the lives of the women, especially those women who will simply travel out of state to get an abortion, and also uh, those who aren't able to, who will be disproportionately be low-income women or women of color? Many ask, where's the concern there for those women? You know, that's actually a great question, and I'm glad you asked that because the data, even from Planned Parenthood themselves, America's largest abortion provider, says that only 3% of their services are abortion, and most of 76% of their clinics are set up in low income minority neighbors. So I do hope that this 97% that they claim as healthcare is full of resources and ways to empower women to choose life. In the meantime, Texas Right to Life has worked on alternatives to abortion. We've empowered pregnancy resource centers. We've empowered nonprofit agencies and social service agencies that are sprouting. Actually, they're already established all over the state to provide free medical care, to provide pre free pregnancy resources and social services. And many times these organizations will help the father of the child too learn about parenting classes, healthy relationship skills, what his response responsibilities could be or should be. And so these services are readily available to women of any income level who are faced with an unplanned pregnancy, who feel coerced into an abortion, and who want to be empowered to choose life. And I do hope that America's largest abortion provider, Planned Parenthood, would get on that train and back away from providing abortion and understand that the way to empower women is to give them options when they're in a crisis. Back to the enforcement or potential lack of enforcement. In court papers, the Texas attorney general wrote that abortion providers haven't shown, quote, that they will be personally harmed by a bill that may never be enforced against them. So help us understand this. Uh, so the argument is that there's no harm if no one enforces the law. And if it's not enforced, what's the point of it? Can't people claim a harm? You know, you're into lawyer speak, and I don't ever want to speak for the attorney general. But I understand what you're asking is that if no one reports a crime, how is it enforced? Is that what you're asking? Uh, that is correct, especially if there are questions about the enforcement, then what's the point of the law? 
Well, the point of the law is to protect unborn children and recognize the humanity of the unborn child who has a heartbeat, who has fingers, toes, hair, eyes, and to empower the mother to choose life and feel like she can bring a child into the world with the multiple resources available. And, you know, when we devalue a child, whether that's a 40 weeks of pregnancy or a minute after birth or any time, we really are devaluing the rest of our brothers and sisters, born and unborn. So this is important. This is an important law in the pro-life movement because we are identifying the unborn child as a person and we are helping pregnant women choose life. As far as the enforcement if a doctor is not providing abortion after the heartbeat is detectable, then he is complying with the law. The way that that's enforced is that people who have information about an illegal or a criminal abortion are to report that to law enforcement or the attorney general's office or to uh, others so that law enforcement can investigate and see if a crime was committed. But the main way of enforcement is to report criminal abortions to law enforcement, and then they will investigate. Elizabeth, as you know, there are um, those on the other side who would definitely challenge some of those things that you said about uh, what's happening there in a woman's uterus with the fetus. But we must move on, because I want to ask you before you leave us, what's your prediction about the fate of Roe v. Wade with the Supreme Court? Well, we are approaching a post-Roe world. We've seen in the country the last year, I the lady before me quoted some other numbers, but I don't know where she's getting that information because all of our numbers and polling, even the numbers that aren't ours, indicate a trend in America, an increasing trend towards the pro-life side and a discomfort with tearing apart an unborn child limb by limb. And so what's important to note is that America and Texas too are increasingly moving away from abortion and into helping women. And so I do think that the faulty logic on which Roe was predicated I think the, those days are soon coming to an end. The Mississippi case asked the Supreme Court to re-examine all the false premises on which the Roe decision was issued. We have much more medical science now. We know what's happening in the womb. We see the fingers and toes and hair and eyes and now the beating heart. And so I do think the Supreme Court is at a turning point and re-examining both the Casey decision and the Roe v. Wade decision and recognizing that the Constitution has no such words as right to privacy in it. And I think they're they're in a want they're well positioned based on the Mississippi case and maybe even the Texas heartbeat case to reject Roe and recognize the humanity of the unborn child as a valid person who needs to be protected and respected. As I said, a passionate debate, and we know Elizabeth Graham, Vice President of Texas Right to Life, you will be right there. Uh, we appreciate your time. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Hi, everyone. George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.